Okay, hi out there. I'm continuing from the other day. I have not fired my cup. I demonstrated mixing armadillo oil with some black and a little bit of non-ping because this is a hard cup and I want to make sure that the black doesn't chip off. Also demoed the um, how to use the vinyl designs. And I'm going to show you, I have a little bit of um, armadillo oil left over from the other day. And since it's not completely dry, I can reconstitute it. I am going to just um, add some more and get it to that inky consistency. But I am going to show you all a few other things that you can do uh, for solid grounding. Um, I had some left. I It was getting a little late, so I didn't want to go on the video too long. So I am going to use the rest of this. I probably will add just a little bit more black. And I'll show you how easily it goes on for just a solid area. I've marked off this area. I, since this is not fired, I am just going to trust that I can get a real straight edge with um, a, my flat shader. If I don't, I can always scratch it uh, straight and I'll make it pretty straight. Um, normally it would fire that and do striping tape, but for time's sake, and I want to get it in the kiln and I didn't fire it because I didn't have enough in there. Um, so I may have a little bit of black left. So I want to show you all one or two other little tips that will help when you are trying to work with eggs or jewelry pieces. And we always have trouble handling small items. I know I do because you're trying to paint it and get it to the kiln without smearing it. And you know it stays wet um, until we fire it. So, and y'all may have seen this already, but it's like the best tip I can give y'all. Um, these little terracotta pots, and they should be available now because it's the spring. Um, it's glued with hot glue to um, porcelain egg. I think it's got glass luster. That's not the point. The point is I can paint all around this egg if I had a, a different shape egg. I can, I can handle it and I can just put it right in the kill. That will burn off with no problems. Okay, so when you have a two-sided jewelry piece and one side is painted, I don't want to um, hot glue this, even though this is a bisque surface. I take some floral tack, which is like um, just the uh, post putty um, it can be used in uh, floral arrangements or it's called post a putty. You can get it at Office Depot. Sometimes it comes in blue. Um, but anyway, I'm going to put this, uh, use this instead because I don't want to damage the, the painted part. Okay, you do have to work a little bit. And also, if you don't keep your post a putty cl closed, which I didn't, <laughs> it gets a little dried out. So part of this was kind of open. But anyway, so I'm just going to put that, you could put this, uh, put this on, on a little um, terracotta pot. I'll use this glued eggs and different things uh, that I need to handle on there before. And it's going through multiple firings. So the reason why not use hot glue? Okay, when this fires, it's going to turn to powder, but it's still going to have a little bit of distance between here and the painted area. And I think if I hot glue it, it I just I just don't trust it. So I'm just going to put it on here and kind of press down. And even if it doesn't stick, it's it's yeah. That's, see, that's holding. Now I can take my black because I'm going to go back and probably put some um I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I might put some metallic on it. I can do whatever I want. I just know that I want to start with black. Um, because I have this mixed up and I'll probably accent this piece with, um, some metallics, liquid bright gold. I'm not sure what I could use burgundy, anything. I just know that this will fire quite well. So, um, let me show you how, how good. And now the brush is dirty. I really probably should have cleaned that brush. 
but I'm not worried about it because it's a synthetic brush. If that was one of my good brushes, you better believe I would have gotten the goop out. And I'm going to show you how good the coverage is with the armadillo oil. I mean, we're going to get one solid, we're going to get black. I'm not putting it on thick. I am putting it on it's self leveling. It is going to give me a lot of coverage. I am not putting on heavy but it is a wet grounding medium. So I'm going to get a lot more color and it's just going to level out and give me great coverage. I'm doing this fast. You can take your time. Um, if you had an area that you want banded on the base, that would be great. But I think I'm going to do some metallics when it's done. When it's sparred. And I will try to do another little video. I just want to show you how fast I can cover this. There's no streaks because it's self leveling. And because I have it tacked down, I can get those edges. If I happen to get some on the back side, not a problem. I can just scratch it off. And then that way it's completely covered. I will not have to fire that again. Well, with the black, I will not have to paint it black again. Let me rephrase that. Okay, so um, because I am not removing any vinyl, I can, um, I do not have to dry it with the heat stamp tool like I did. Just checking to make sure I have all my edges. But look how fast that went. That went really fast. Um, again, I think I mentioned this in the last video. I'll probably, um, if I have any more left over, I'll just go back and do some of the back of the jewelry disc. Again, I reconstituted it, not a problem. But I just want to show you how good a coverage I get. And I am going to put some on here. I may not finish this. I'm trying to keep this video really short. But I just want to give you an idea of how much coverage I get, how smooth it levels out. And that would have taken probably with an open medium, um, three coats maybe. So I think that's good enough for demo. I will go back and carefully line that up, but I just want to show you all the coverage, the smoothness and how fast that went. All right, I'll do another video and I'll come back and um, show y'all the finished, finished piece. Okay, I thought I was going to end the video, but I'm going to pause, I paused it, and I was going to show y'all one more thing. I went and watched American Idol, <laughs> took a little break. Um, I, it's dry now, I removed the tape, I cleaned up the edge, there was not that much to clean up anyway, but I want to show y'all one other thing, if you had some paint left over, usually I didn't, I've never promoted my armadillo oil for pen work because some days it works very well. And depending on the humidity, I think it dry too fast, but I've been playing with it by adding, if you have some left over and you need to sign your name, um, it didn't mix well with like turf, which I don't use or Polish mineral spirits or whatever. I mixed a couple drops of lavender. I just bought this one um, online. It's, uh, you don't have to have the therapeutic grade, but I got it on um, Amazon. It was convenient. I was out of some, but I've ordered, I have some from, you know, like uh, Dallas, China and um, other, um, any kind of lavender oil. Um, imitation, I think imitation works okay. I like the real lavender oil, but I think imitation works just as well. And I do most of my pen work with just lavender oil and a dry medium that tends to work the best. I've tried 
um, other things. But uh, lately, and I want to make sure this worked consistently before I threw it out there. I had some left and I did add a couple drops of lavender oil just until the it runs off of my palette knife. Now, there is a delicate dance. You don't want to have too much oil, any kind of oil, kind of pen oil, the ratio with the pigment. And that takes a little plain. So mix a little bit at a time and play with it. Um, another thing that people do, this is not an inking. So it's, it's going to have to work with gravity. I do like the bigger um, pen points. I don't know if this one's from Mary Gosden. If it isn't, hers are amazing. Um, so you may have a little bit better look with the bigger pen points. When I do really fine detail pen work, I do like like an English pinpoint or zebra pinpoint. But um, the main thing is the consistency of the paint and gravity flowing. You not, you're not going to get the pen work to up and down, and that's how we paint. So you have to remind yourself, why isn't this working? Also, um, you got to go a little bit slower. If the if the if all the stars line up and you have this perfect consistency, I'm going to tell you, it just, you can go a little bit faster. So let's see. Um, and I've also been in an awkward position too. Not as comfortable as I used to do, usually do because I am trying to keep it in frame. But um, see how I am just taking my time. I'm letting the, uh, it, letting the ink flow off of my pen. Now, some people that do pen work will tell you that you're not supposed to cover the hole. Uh, I've done that and it still works. Um, some people, uh, I think that really do calligraphy, you're only supposed to cover the back of the uh, pinpoint, not scoop it up. Well, do what works for you. As long as it looks good on here, nobody's going to uh, judge you on how you um, get it on there. <laughs> so I, I think it's flowing quite nicely. And you can do Zentangle and everything. So I'm really excited that um, this is working. I didn't, I've never promoted the oil again or just pen work because I thought it dried a little bit too fast, but with, and it didn't play well with other oils mixed in. I don't, it likes to just be <laughs> standing alone. So I think that looks, really nice and it is flowing quite nicely I'm not going super super slow and I have done some other pen work so anyway just thought I'd pass those tips on you might try you could probably I've seen these uh, calligraphy pens and pinpoints and like Hobby Lobby or Michaels um, and I have a bunch of these that I've gotten in an estate sale I have uh, some other calligraphy points that I haven't even played with. They've got some real interesting shapes. So that's uh, another thing on my experimental to-do list. Okay, this is going in the kiln. I've got a little uh, kiln, jewelry kiln that I can do 30 minutes. Hopefully it'll be cooled off in the morning. I don't know if the recording will allow me to continue. I don't want to have to <laughs> edit and all that. So if I can, I may be back with a little bit more or this may be the end. Either way, I'll see you in some future videos. Okay, this is becoming the never ending video tutorial. But anyway, I just want to show you a few more things you can do with armadillo oil. I don't know if y'all can see the first fire on this was an entire coat of um, fire mother pearl. Okay, and then I suctioned this off with some curved tape and behind these, this is dichro glass cabochons that I, I didn't fire these on because when I, I found when I fired on, I fire on glass on to porcelain, it can crack. So E6000 is my friend, but this is the kind of curvature you're going to get and you can do it over. It's a little dusty now, I'm trying to clean it up. It's been it's been since like 2010. Um, but anyway, this is one coat of black with 
armadillo oil, and it is over mother of pearl. Now this section was sectioned off. It is not over black. It is palladium. And that doesn't like to be mixed with any um, other uh, over anything else. So, so I may or may not have fired it over mother of pearl. I'm going to have to test that. Most of the time when I put the silver or palladium, it, it can turn it dull. So I would put it on bare china only. Okay. So also it has some of Marcy's crystal magic that is not fired in. So after everything was painted, I went back and this is one fire as well, one painting. Um, I did not paint it with armadillo oil. You can, if you're a fast painter or you want to do like a Dresden style, but this is probably painted with either my open medium or my semi-open medium. I think it was painted with my open medium, but all this black here, one far. Now, um, again, I did these little dichroic glass jewels, capuchons. I fired them and made them and I just bonded them on after everything was painted and fired and done and no more firing. That was the last thing I did was glue that on and put some crystal magic. Okay, now this is probably one of my coolest pieces, I think, ever. And I did this, I know, like back in 2010. I took a egg box, completely covered it with liquid bright gold. Okay. This area... I chipped off into like a garnet jewel tone. I did, I don't know how many firings I did with um, glass. This is glass. This red is glass, built up glass. And this is base for gold on the outer edge and liquid bright. That's the first fire on everything just getting this to not pop off and crack. I mean, it must have five or six fires because I slowly built up the, the glass. I think it was frit. It was, um, anyway, you do have to have something to bond. I didn't have non-ping then. I didn't know what non-ping was, but base for gold after I chipped it out, bonded the glass and let me build it up. Um, then after I did that, I went back and put vinyl, designs all over. Some of it, I had to continue with a little bit of the scratch method, put my black with the armadillo oil all over these areas, dried it with the heat stamp too, and then removed it. Um, I thought about going back over this and I could actually paint over that gold something. I haven't done it. Um, it's been a long time. I just kind of like it the way it is. It's pretty cool. But the fact that this, I got the glass to bond to porcelain was pretty cool. And one more thing, you can paint over luster. Now, the trick is to find ivory luster. Ivory luster is so hard to find. Uh, Adele Powell Holt used to sell it. Um, you can just find, if you can find a cream colored um, porcelain to start, it's fine. This was... I think I'd gotten it. Yeah, it was Macasa. Anyway, I didn't like the stark whiteness of it. Um, it may look white in the video, but it is, it has a coat of ivory luster. Then moving it around so you can see it's a big face. I took some curve tape and taped off this area here two areas so that allowed that was the, the striping for the liquid bright gold after the fired ivory luster went back with the gold i may have done that after it's again this has been since 2010 um this was just a hodgepodge of different vinyls you could put the black with the armadillo oil and dry it and scratch this. You do not have to, to do, I'm sure I did scratch some of it if I didn't have all those little stickers quite like I wanted. But anyway, that was done the same technique I showed y'all with the 
butterflies. It's just, I did a simple tutorial to start off, but you can get really intricate. Then, um, of course, this was all freehand. These were orchids that I painted in monochrome. It's been one of my favorite vases. I've actually used this. Uh, my husband got me a couple um, bouquets of roses and I, I used it. Now it's in the bathroom. I keep it in the downstairs bathroom and I have shades in it and it's just a decorative item. But I would use it and uh, for flowers in the future. Okay, just want to show y'all some different um, techniques and give y'all some ideas, some creative inspiration, and uh, see y'all later.